Hi guys, welcome to my desk. I started a conversation over on Instagram this morning and loads of you said that you were finding it really interesting. So I thought I would move that discussion over onto YouTube and show you what I'm up to today because I personally find this really interesting as well. Late last night, I got my page proofs back for my new book, The Girl Aquarium. So when you um, submit a manuscript to your editor after you've done any editing that needs doing, they then typeset the manuscript and they send it back to you to check over. Normally it's just a PDF and you're going through, maybe having one final read through to make sure there are no typos that have escaped you. But with poetry, formatting is super, super, super important. I would argue, or at least I feel, that the negative space on a page is it's not nearly as important as the words, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it is really very important how the poem looks, how it moves, um, where it stops and starts. All of these things are vital to the meaning and the tone that you want to get across to the reader. Because I've been writing my poems in a Word document previously, so in A4, and now they have been put into book-sized pages, there are some instances where lines have run over onto two lines because a book page is smaller than A4. <laughs> so um, my editor has put an indent on that second line to show the reader or to indicate to the reader that this used to be a whole line but it won't fit on one line. However, I think that looks really messy um, and he also thinks that it looks a bit messy which is why he sent it back to me to read over. I've spoken about poetry quite a lot on this channel, I have a whole playlist of poetry videos which I'll link in the description box down below and I also run a series called Dissect Poem with Jen where I analyse, do an in-depth reading of another poem and encourage you to do that with me. I have however never spoken about on this channel how I personally edit my own work my own poetry. I have spoken about short stories, which I'll link in the description box down below, but I have never shown you how I think about the structure of my own verse. So that is what I'm going to show you today. Uh, I'm going to take you through some of these instances where I mentioned that lines have gone over onto two lines. I'm going to show you how I decide to reformat that poem, if indeed I do, and talk you through my reasons why. If you would like to learn more about writing poetry and about poetry and structure, I run writing workshops online which you can take one-on-one -on -one with me via email at any time of year. I'll link those in the description box down below and I also offer editorial services as well if you've written something that you're looking to send to agents or publishers. Again, all details down below. But I wanted to show you this because, as I said, I find it interesting. Other people might not find it interesting, but I get really geeky over small little details like this. Plus, I want to show you the great view that I have from my desk, which you will have seen on Instagram if you follow me on Instagram. But I have a family of spider plants, a whole family. One of my new professions is plant mum. Uh, Jean bought me this spider plant on the left, which is called Anastasia. She gifted it to me and Mr. M when we got married last year. And she has a blossomed. Actually, not technically, because there are no flowers. Can you blossom if you don't have flowers? Anyway, she's grown a lot. And <laughs> now she has lots of little babies. So I have uh, propagated them and now they're in all their little pots and I, I don't know, it really lifts my spirits to look up from my desk and see something living. I enjoy it. I would recommend it. Uh, okay, so let me turn this camera around and show you the page proofs and what I am going to get up to editing wise. Okay, so welcome to my desktop. This is actually a slight spoiler as well because another exciting thing that I got in my inbox last night was an email from Katie with the final illustrations for Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales and that's coming out in September. This is one of my favourite spreads, so I've set it as my desktop background. But essentially I have three files open that I'm uh, going back and forth between. So these are the page proofs. Um, so this is what... Um, my editor Neil sent me last night and if I open these, here we go, into full screen then you'll be able to see them better. Something I never really thought about, which again is just a very small detail that most people probably don't care about but I find interesting, is that the right hand pages of a manuscript have a bigger left margin because of the crease in the centre of the book and that's something I had never really thought about before. So after this page we've got this one which details my previous books and then has the title page the copyright stuff, and then on the right hand side we have a quote from Jeanette Winterson which I really like, which I chose to go at the beginning of this book, which says, I don't know how to answer, I know what I think, but words in the head are like voices underwater, they are distorted. So that's from Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit, 
It matches the contents of the book and also the cover of the book. I'll insert a picture of the cover here, which I've shown you guys before. And obviously the cover matches the inside, which is why I chose the cover, but I think it kind of bridges the gap between those two things. Um, so that is why I picked that quote. And um, then we've got acknowledgements, um, contents page, and then we have this, which is the first poem, also the second one as well sneaky so we'll go back to single pages um yeah the book is split into three sections so this is the first poem of the first section which is called um concerning the principles of human knowledge and i read it in a video last week so i will link that in the description box down below if you'd like to go and find out i was going to say find out more you can read it here as well but if you want to listen to me reading it in full so as you can see here there are two lines that have run over so those were one line before when i try and tell my story i take a deep breath and vomit saplings of myself was all one line and also and i try to explain that all stories can coexist and i am many separate things was also one line um so one of the other folders that i have open is um a word document this one here um which has all of the poems in so i can play around with form in this and then send the edits that i want over to my editor so this is the first line here. So when I try and tell my story, I take a deep breath and vomit saplings of myself that tell translations of the same story. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put a line break here. So this is what it will look like. When I try and tell my story, I take a deep breath and vomit saplings of myself that tell translations of the same story. What I could have done is put a line break after deep breath and if I put a line break there it would be encouraging the reader to take a breath because it is the end of the line so it would reflect what the words say. So I could have it like this. When I try and tell my story I take a deep breath and vomit saplings of myself that tell translations of the same story. However that is not where I want the reader to pause. I don't want them to pause after breath because that implies some kind of calming um i want them to pause after vomit like do we really want to have a space to pause for being sick i mean i'm not encouraging the reader to be sick but that is the emotion that i want to get from that that nervousness so when i try and tell my story i take a deep breath and vomit saplings of myself that tell translations of the same story it's a very very subtle difference because of course the words are the same it's just the pause the very slight pause because there's no punctuation there falls in a very different place and also then we have saplings of myself on a line of its own which implies some kind of hole like you're maybe cupping them in front of you it's like you can see them and it also creates this um switch in imagery so taking a deep breath and vomiting that is not a very nice image i apologize for talking about sick here by the way um <laughs> but it's not a very nice image but then saplings of myself it's almost like you have thrown up little Anastasias, little little spider plants. It turns something gross into something curious. And that is the tone that I want. I don't want a calmness. I want some kind of surprising something that is unusual. So the next part where I need to change the line break is here. So, and I try to explain that all stories can coexist and I am many separate things that disagree with one another. And that is okay. The reason currently that the line break is after many separate things is to have a break, to separate one line from the next, to physically show separate things. Um, but as I have shown in this document, it can't all fit on one line, so I need to change it. So I could put the line break here, okay? And I try to explain that all court stories can coexist and I am many separate things that disagree with one another and that is okay. And that's probably where you would be most tempted to put the line break because it's before an and, you're linking um, two parts of a sentence that isn't jarring. It makes sense to have a line break there. But again, I don't want to go for something that feels comfortable because this poem is not about feeling comfortable. This poem is about feeling like you're a complicated being 
and that as this line says that you have many different feelings and emotions that can contradict each other and that's okay so i don't want to go for something that feels calming so i'm not going to put the line break there i'm going to put it here so and I try to explain that all stories can coexist and I am many separate things that disagree with one another and that is okay. Again, like with the new line break I put in the previous stanza, this is a very small change but it's a jarring line break that will ask the reader to take a double take. So, and I try to explain that all stories can coexist and I am. You can stop there, I am. Like, I exist, I am, I am here, but then you run on. And I think that having many separate things on a line of its own reflects saplings of myself, which is also on a line of its own. Um, so that is what I will edit this poem to so that it looks slightly cleaner. All right, let's find another one. Let's find another line that has run over. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you one more because otherwise I, well, I wouldn't be showing you the whole book actually because there aren't that many instances of this happening. I think it's happened about maybe eight or nine times in the entire book, but I don't wanna show you too many poems inside the book because it's not out yet. So this one is called Memories of Your Sister in a Full Body Wetsuit. And if you had purchased a copy of my poetry pamphlet, The Hungry Ghost Festival, which came out in 2012 and is now out of print. We've sold out of all of the print runs and because I have a full length collection, we're not reprinting this one. Um, then you will have seen an earlier version of this poem. I have tweaked it slightly. So this is a poem called Memories of Your Sister in a Full Body Wetsuit. And it is a woman looking back on a teenager's going on a car journey with her boyfriend whose sister has a bodily difference. Um, kids in her, in her school call her Selkie um, because of the formation of her bones in her legs. So there are two instances here where lines have run over. So let me show you what those look like in the original. Here we go. Um, here we go. So this is what it should have been before. You said you used to visit before your mum found amber bottles, before your sister's operations, for she'd arrived in this world swimming, your dad hunting for receipts. Now, kids call your sister sulky, trying hard to make it stick. Her left leg is weaker, only half the bones, an unknown's cry, she must have done a bad thing back then, back when, like you can bottle karma and shower in it. Screw it. So this is in the middle of the poem and with the uh, lines running on as they've been shown here, we end up with this and I think it's back when, and I just when, just when on its own. So that's what it currently looks like, which I don't like. I have to say though, I don't mind this one. The implication is that she has arrived in this world swimming as if this is a different thing to what other people do as though she is somewhere on the outside on the outskirts so putting swimming on its own reflects that as if she is treading water in this vast expanse that nobody else can understand so i am tempted to keep swimming like that even though it is an indent even though as i mentioned before i didn't like the way in general, run on lines were formatted. I quite like that because I like the implication of that new word placement. However, I do want to change this bit here uh, where it's done at a separate time. So, her left leg is weaker, only half the bones, an unknown's cry, she must have done a bad thing back then, back when. Now I could do this. Um, I could also, do this and play around with space um, to show um, time passing, but I don't like that very much. I think what I might do is do that. So, now kids call your sister Selkie, trying hard to make it stick. Her left leg is weaker, only half the bones, an unknown's cry, she must have done a bad thing back then, back when. Like you can bottle karma and shower in it. Screw it. So, Having this on a line of its own, an unknown's cry, it helps highlight the rhyme here, bones and unknowns. Um, also, what they're crying is this, 
crying as in they're shouting, they are shouting this line. She must have done a bad thing back then, back when. But it also creates a meaning of its own, an unknown's cry. Um, so not that they're crying out and shouting, but unknown's cry. Unknown's are upset because they don't understand the situation. Um, outsiders might have pity, misplaced pity. Um, so I think it creates an interesting double meaning there. If you're still here, I hope that you found this interesting. Thank you for listening to me ramble about editorial changes. I'm going to go through and um, fix all the other rogue lines that have spilled over. If you'd like to find out more about The Girl Aquarium, I'll link the book in the description box down below. As I said, it's out in April, but it is available to pre-order now. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that I was doing an event in London to celebrate the launch of the collection. That has actually now sold out, but I am going to try and arrange another event in London for some time, probably in early May, and I'll let you know details when I have them and I will be traveling around the UK doing various different events. So if you'd like to keep an eye on my events page, I'll also link that in the description box down below as well. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have a whole playlist of poetry videos, which are free to watch. I'll link them down below, um, as well as a series on how to dissect poetry and analyze it. If you're a writer and you're interested in signing up for one of my writing workshops, those are all online, so you can take part wherever you happen to be. You just need to scroll down to the individual workshop part of my website. I'll link it in the description box down below. You can drop me an email if you would like to take one of those courses. As I said, I'm gonna crack on, edit the rest of this stuff. I will speak to you guys later. I hope you're having a great week. Lots of bookish love. Bye.